I honestly don't even know what he wants me to do. So, not a very successful first turn tie. Let's go find a freshwater lake. Welcome back to another episode of Breaking Waves. This is Ben, our jean vest loving, fearless captain. One day he convinced me to go along with him on the adventure of buying and moving on to a sailboat, Kiana. And since then, we've had no regrets. I'm Allie, by the way, first mate and fishing enthusiast. And together, we've been exploring the Pacific Northwest, and one day we hope to take her home and our surfboards even further. Oh, this is Bruce, our sandy boat dog. Thanks for coming along with us, and special thanks to our patrons for keeping us going. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell. Oh my god. Oh, I can't believe this is a thing right now. Last time on Breaking Waves, you watched us roll into Desolation Sound, making a pit stop at Refuge Cove to stock up and gather our bearings. We were so excited to finally be there. So even though refuge looked like a great spot, we were keen on going further into nature and finding an anchorage maybe all to ourselves. Behind us, it feels like it's welcoming us to Desolation Sound. It's like summer is here, there is light in the sky, and the forecast actually looks more like summer starting tomorrow morning. So it just feels like we're being ushered in by summer right now. stocked up and we were contemplating staying there but we just wanted to be like out at anchor and like in nature so we came here to Ten Tenedos Bay and uh, there's a couple little anchorages I had like a plan two, plan B and plan C backup in case there were a lot of boats here but well, we haven't gone around the corner yet we haven't yet. gone around the corner yet but it's been pretty quiet all we day. haven't seen like any boats oh there's a boat way over there behind, be behind you I don't know but there's a boat behind you this place is absolutely stunning and we feel very remote Well, we picked our spot. There's, um, to be fair, there's definitely a rock in here with us. This is a new skill for us. We're right in there, and that X is a rock. But on Navionics, it's here. Let's record that after we. And we're here, so hopefully we'll be okay. So we're getting used to anchoring in these deeper and tighter anchorages than normal. So what, what do you think we let out there? Uh, we let out 120 feet. 120 feet. So we're like three to one. And then the plan is to, I think I'm gonna, there's like a little rope over there. I don't think that's for us. They have, they talk about metal rings being set aside for us by the park. I plan to check that rope out either way. We've got 200 feet of line, so hopefully we can find something to grab onto. Allie is learning how to stern tie <laughs> while I stern tie. <laughs> so we got, we bought 200 feet of this floating half inch poly. We should probably do this soon because we're kind of floating over towards those rocks. I'm not great at steering, and there's a rock around here, so I'm kind of nervous. I only know he was like, just put it in reverse and turn the boat, the 
wheel towards him, which I've done, and now I'm going forward to try and bring the boat to swing around, but it's just not going anywhere. I know that I'm an awful steerer, that's why I just literally never do it. So, not a very successful first stern tie experience. It wasn't horrible, but considering there is a rock over there, and what we did is we, first we dropped the hook, and then the plan was to take the dinghy in with the line to find something to tie to. And that rope is what I saw on the way in that I thought we'd tie to. But then when I went to do that, the boat started swinging around, heading towards where the rock was. And so then we were in like a race against time between focusing on getting the line ready versus focusing on keeping the boat working back towards where it needs to be. And so, I'm garbage at steering. <laughs> yeah, he's not very good at handling the boat, like not confident. And fair enough, it was kind of a hard situation. I wasn't even confident, but... So we switched, and like I was talking to you guys while I was trying to steer, and it was not going well. But we did end up switching. I jumped in the dinghy. Uh, I picked up the stern line that stern line that wasn't just floating, and then Ben started steering, which is obviously a lot more efficient. I had tied the stern line already, so you just had to go pick it up. Yeah. So I went picked up the stern line, brought it back to Ben because I can at least steer the dinghy. So uh, <laughs> we're tying off now to the back of the boat, and uh, we got it done. It wasn't it wasn't oh, the smoothest. Oh, yeah, but... <laughs> Next time we'll. I mean, we'll look it up, first of all, how to do it, which you were doing, and I just said, decided to go for it. And you made fun of me. Um, well, I mean, you could have just kept the boat backwards, it would have been fine. But <laughs> have I ever been able to keep the boat backwards since we've bought it? No. Why would you think that I could all of a sudden do it uh, this time? I mean, once, actually. <laughs> Literally <laughs> failed. I'm O for all okay. right now. So, but next time, what we'll do is... Like, I'll, I'll stay on the helm, we'll keep both boats running, <laughs> Allie will run in on the dinghy, tie us off to shore, and then I'll have a target of where the back of the boat needs to be, and I'll get us there. <laughs> anyway, we got it done. We got it done. So you have just witnessed how roles on boats are defined. <laughs> who is awful at something and who is yeah, well, better at it? I've had less practice, like, I've, I've had a lot more practice helming the boat than you have, and that's, like, it's... We're slowly adding your helming skills to the mix, but at the moment, and our first ever stern tie with a big <laughs> rock there, happened that we needed the better helmsman to take over. That's all. <laughs> How roles are defined on boats. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. Comox this morning. To Desolation Sound by night. Don't worry, baby. I'll get us there. <laughs> so Yali's the better um, stern time line puller. She's a good line puller. Not so much a helmswoman, but she's a good line puller. Uh, <laughs> saving gas. <laughs> Money's tight, okay. <laughs> this is our tie-off zone here. Are you it um, looks acceptable. It looks like it's you know it's not like we're gonna get a lot of wind or anything right now, so I'll trust that. Okay, princess. Get. Get. Whoa. Well done. All right. Not bad. The next morning, it was like a light switch had gone off and summer had arrived. We enjoyed our coffees on deck in the sun while going through the dream speaker to find out what we could do in tentatives. Camera gear? Check. Bathing suits? Check. Sunscreen? Check. Thanks, Mom. Let's go find a freshwater lake. So proud of our stern tie. Feels like we can anchor anywhere now. Good job, us. We can call ourselves sailors now. <laughs> How big the ferns are. I feel like I'm in Jumanji. 90s versus 80s babies. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Whoa! <laughs> We're opting to take the 
north path. On this hike, it forks at one point and it says that the north path is a little bit more rigorous, but more worth it. So we're gonna give it a go. Clear the water is. Um, so in the dream speaker, this says that this is a really good lake for bathing in. Uh, it's apparently super warm, and since we're only used to the ocean, and the ocean is always cold, looking forward to seeing how warm this actually is. Our dog, the dodo brain. Oh my god, <laughs> Ben, nice? it's like bath water. Oh good. <laughs> oh good. Oh, that is so nice. Perfect. I got this biodegradable shampoo bar from Lush. It has bits of seaweed in it. Completely biodegradable and it has seaweed in it. So, I get to have a shower. Little fishies, yeah. Okay, so we're sailing back in a headwind up to Squirrel Cove. We're going to check out that anchorage for the week as like a home base so I can work. And yeah, we got to do a tack here and we're probably about three miles away from Squirrel Cove. And hopefully there's good cell coverage there because I really need somewhere to work for the next few days. So we're going to go check that out. What are your thirst, first thoughts so far about Desolation Sound? Oh my god, it's beautiful. I keep on having moments where I'm like, I can't believe we're here. Uh, we better tack. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we are pulling into Squirrel Cove. Uh, just taking a look at how many bars of service we get so that Ben can work while we're here. And I mean, it would be awesome if I could get an episode out. Um, we're at four bars right now. We're at four bars right now. I'm, I'm worried that we usually have four bars and then we enter the anchorage and then all the like protection against the wind acts as also protection against service so fingers crossed i don't know if i'm feeling hopeful to be honest but ben is 
This is also a really cute anchorage, so I hope we can stay. It's got like a swing that goes out over the water and at least three hikes. Yeah, what else? We're looking for easy dock access for Bruce. We're looking for safe anchor and good cell coverage. And somewhere that we can like exercise all week, go for walks and runs. But bars are the number one priority, so. But we're not looking for like the most beautiful anchorage ever. We're looking for the most functional for us to spend the work week at. To set up shop. So, we'll keep you posted. So we just sort of toured through the more protected part of the anchorage um, and there's tons of boats in there, it looks lovely, but there was only one bar and like right here there's like three or four bars, there's a really small window in which you can get three or four bars and it's just right in front of that opening which makes a lot of sense I guess so it's it's a fine spot like it's not maybe as nice as some of the other ones inside but it's it'll totally work and I'm just happy that we have good communications here and then it's only like a few hundred meter dinghy ride to the general store and the dinghy dock and the fuel and everything we need that's over there. So I think we found our spot. We found our home base for the week. Setting up shop. Setting up shop. What's your dinner, chef? Tacos. Tacos. Poor stove. Still not fixed. So I think that about does it for this episode. We are settling in for the work week and so excited to be in Desolation Sound. So excited that it's sunny and summertime. Thank you so much for watching. Smash the subscribe button, like, share, all those good things. And one way that you could really, really help us out if you are part of like a boating. Facebook group, like a yacht club group or a, a boat association group or something like that where it's allowed and you feel like those people might want to check out our channel, if you could post a, an episode to one of those groups, that would be hugely appreciated. That would be massive. So um, please do that and see you next time. And just before you go, we're going to give a shout out to our patrons who make this whole channel even possible. This week's episode go out to Nigel Tisdale, Joseph Yu, C. Witten, and Brent Kate. You guys, literally from the bottom of our hearts, we can't thank you enough. You make all of this possible and you keep this channel going. So we release episodes on the 1st and the 15th of every night. Uh, if you haven't already, definitely hit subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell. See you next time.